Hey everybody, welcome back. So we're going to continue on with the foundation, so we're 18% of the way through. So this one we're going to install text editors. A text editor is by far the most used developer tool regardless of what type of developer you are. A good text editor can help you write code with real-time code checking, syntax highlighting, and automatic formatting. Why can't I use Microsoft Word? Uh, rich text editors such as Microsoft Word and LibreOffice Writer are great for writing a paper, but the features that make them good at creating nicely formatted documents make them unsuitable for writing code. A document created with these rich text editors has more than just text embedded in the file. These files also contain information on how to display the text on the screen and the data on how to display graphics embedded in the document. In contrast, plain text editors such as VS Code and Sublime don't have any additional information. Saving only text allows other programs like Ruby's interpreter to read and execute the file as code. Cool. And so what does that mean? Yeah, the, um, Microsoft Word is not just a raw text editor. So we'll be looking at the text editors going forward. <clears throat> so code editors. You can think of code editors as specialized web development tools. They are highly customizable, customizable and offer many features that will make your life easier. There is nothing worse than spending two hours trying to figure out why your program isn't working, only to realize that you missed the closing brackets. Plugins, syntax highlighting, auto-closing of brackets and braces, and linting are just a few of the benefits of using a code editor. There are many text editors out there to choose from, but we suggest starting with Visual Studio Code. Visual Studio Code, or just VS Code, is commonly referred to it, as it's commonly referred to, is an excellent free code editor. It has outstanding add-on support and great Git integration. VS Code is the most popular code editor among the Odin students and moderators, so support is easy to find in the community. Which editor you use is generally a matter of preference, but for the purpose of this course, we are going to assume that you're using VS Code, mainly because it's free. It's easy to use, and it works pretty much the same on every operating system. Keep in mind that this means you will not be able to get help if you are using a different text editor other than VS Code for the curriculum. As a reminder, if you're using a virtual machine, you should install VS Code on your VM. You're uh, welcome to also install it on your host, but you'll want to make sure that you have this, have this cr cr uh, critical tool inside your VM. Okay, so let's look at the instructions for installing it here. Mac OS, okay. So first it says to go to the download link. Okay, so I've got my download set to go to the desktop, so it's here. But if you go command spacebar and go to finder, and you go to your da downloads, that's where it should be by default. Okay, so the way to do this, okay, we can follow the directions. Double click the, the one, this is gonna be the same process we used for the last one. Drag the visual code app into your applications folder. This might be non trivial for some people. So if you do that, go, go to your finder and then you want to go to your applications folder. And then you just click and drag Visual Studio Code into here. So unlike where Chrome had that little box that popped up and we could just drag it in there, this one we actually have to know where to put it. And so then it wants us to delete the installer file. So if we go to here, I think, uh, Go, yeah, go to your downloads folder and drag this into the trash. So you can drag it into trash or you can press command delete and that'll get rid of it. That'll move it to the trash as well. So now if we go to our applications folder, we should see Visual Studio Code here. And we want to just double click it. Cool. So, okay. And so it says, it's, do you want to open it? It's from the internet. So we want to say yes. Now it's possible I had this downloaded before. So you might actually have to go into security, unlock the thing and then allow Visual Studio Code to be opened, but uh, this works fine for us right now. Uh, familiar size so self with VS Code will allow you to save time and become more productive. By watching this VS Code tutorial for beginners, you'll get an idea for the features of VS Code. How's the offer? But it is. Okay, in the interest of not plagiarizing this video, I'm just going to speed it up and then I'm just going to cut till the end and I'm going to keep track of any little things that I might want to add to um, support um, maybe things that I like about VS Code because I've used this before. And so we'll skip to the end. Okay, awesome. I, now, uh, with this one, I think that 
this isn't necessarily geared towards real early stage programmers. If you don't, if we're still learning what Git is and we're still learning about all the basics of it, a lot of that would probably go straight over your head. But just having gone through that, I think was useful. So I would encourage everybody to go through and watch that entire video. Cool. And so that takes care of our familiarizing ourselves with VS Code uh, for now. We're going to learn a lot more about all the little things like the debugger and the Git commands um, and, the, and the file structure as we move through this course. So we'll just learn it as we go. But now you have a, a basic uh, a fundamental like opening introduction to it. So additional resource. This section contains helpful links to related content. It isn't required, so consider it supplemental. Cool. Uh, handy PDFs of VS Code's sh shortcuts for Mac OS. I might if be downloading this onto my computer just so I can see it. Oh, wow. So yeah, let's open this thing up. Look at this. Okay, cool. So this is all the VS short codes. Now, I'm not going to find this especially useful because what I always like to do if I look for something, like let's say we wanted to uh, show command palette. I could come up here and be like show command uh Command palette. Oh, no. Okay, cool. Yeah, I'm actually going to download this and save it to a file so that I can uh, look it over every once in a while. So I can just save this to my desktop for now. And then the documentation. We don't need to go over this right now because I'm not sure exactly how much we're going to do in the course going forward. But this will become a very commonly used uh, resource as we move forward. Cool. Um, so we've got that and the documentation. So we can mark this one as complete and we can move on to the next lesson. Thank you guys for watching. We'll see you in the next lesson.